Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through how to project a normal map in 3ds Max here through the render to texture menu. And so you need a couple of things. Uh, I'm talking specifically in the pipeline of moving high poly information over to a low poly mesh. And so we have a high poly here. So this is one of the things that you'll need. This is a, a crate and it has a ZBrush pass on it very dense that's the wireframe <laughs> and the low poly mesh and the low poly mesh needs to have UVs it's the unwrap I'm going with and so just to get right into it to open up the render to texture menu you can hit zero on your keyboard or you can also find it under the rendering menu uh, render to texture and so this menu or this dialog box is context sensitive I need my low poly selected to be able to operate the settings here because we're setting up something or setting up these projection settings for this low poly specifically uh, again this is contact sensitive so I'm just gonna roll through my settings uh, first things first I'm actually gonna enable projection mapping and you're gonna wanna pick the mesh that we're trying to pull information from and in our case that's the high poly so I'm gonna go ahead and pick and you saw earlier my crate mesh was actually fairly dense and so I don't want to wait for Max to try and add all of these complex pieces here to the stack. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually select one of them and I'm going to add it. And what you'll notice right off the bat is that it added a projection modifier for us. And it also tried to throw, Max tried to throw out a cage for us to capture our geometry. See that cage right there. There is that single object that we added to our stack and I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of it here so I'm going to do pick list and add the rest of that high poly information add and it's a lot faster if you do it this way um, sometimes when you're working on really complex meshes and you have all of these pieces like this it's better to add it uh, separately after the projection modifier has been added because there's a refresh issue when you add all the pieces it has to refresh the render to texture menu for every high poly piece that it adds to the stack and it's just an awful wait and that's sort of the workaround for it there so I'm also gonna reset my cage I'm gonna turn it on shaded so you can see it but I'm also gonna reset my cage and since it's such a simple mesh, push it out to capture all of my high poly while I'm here. Easy enough. And back into the render to texture menu, I'm gonna go into the output rollout and I'm gonna add a normals map element. And that sort of added this little element to the output here and we actually gotta set our output. It's the ellipsis button you gotta click to save it to wherever your folder structure is. Mine was in a projection mapping demo folder. And I'm gonna save my create normal map here. So we're gonna go create underscore, I'm gonna do a capital N for normal map and save that. It's gonna be a 24-bit Targa TGA file. 24 bit because we don't need an alpha and I'm actually going to leave it at a 256 map size for a test render. The other thing I would check while you're in here is that you're using an existing channel. This is to say that you're using your existing unwrap that you made prior to project projecting. If we use automatic unwrap it's going to throw a flat mapping on your mesh and try to bake it like that and maybe that's good for just like a quick test but for your final you're going to want to use the unwrap that you made and use existing channel and it's more than likely on channel one so set these to channel one and i'm going to set my padding all the way up i'm not going to describe what padding is here but 
that's just something that I tend to do. And we set our output. We said that we were going to roll with a test. And so I think everything's set up. I'm just going to go ahead and render here. And uh, I'm going to pause it while it renders. But I'm going to go ahead and render and we'll see what kind of normal map element we get out of this. So our render here is done, and I just wanted to note something. Um, when rendering a normal map, uh, these days I have to remind people, uh, students, to make sure they switch their rendering engine here under render, I'm sorry, rendering menu, render setup, um, to scanline render. In older versions it was called the default scanline render because it actually defaulted, Max defaulted to Scanline Renderer. Uh, in other versions it might default to Mental Ray and, and they seem to be flying through renderers these days so I don't know what it defaults to but just to be safe make sure that you're set up to the Scanline Renderer in 3ds Max uh, when you're doing the render to texture menu because if not uh, Mental Ray has a tendency to give some washed out uh, I want to say it has something to do with the gamma um, normal maps uh, but it just usually doesn't play right and uh, also to note my high poly material here is a standard max material it's not a arch and design shader it's just a basic standard shader but uh, here was our render preview this is not what a normal map looks like um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch Photoshop but this is not this is a uh, kind of where max is set up right now the lighting that you're seeing is max's default camera it has a light attached to it and so when when it renders to preview this we're getting the default max <laughs> kind of actually uh, how we're viewing it so if i were to spotlight this guy and re-render it you would see one of these faces ends up looking just like how bright this face here is. So I'm going to open my Create Normal Map. And that pretty much rendered as expected. Uh, I'm not seeing any anything really strange. Uh, this here is my padding that I had set previously. And because it's such a small map and I set it so high, you get this uh, sort of edge extrusion from uh, our pixels here, just straight out. But it's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, up our render settings here to a larger mesh, or I'm sorry, a larger map size. Oh no. Set it to a 1024. I don't even need to reset the output. We'll just overwrite when we re-render. Just gonna overwrite normal map. So I didn't see anything terribly wrong in the original normal map. I'm gonna re-render a 1024 here just to check it again. It's still kind of a test render. We'll turn up some higher quality settings in a moment, but I want to see what a 1024 looks like on the mesh. So that 1024 finished rendering out. I'm just going to go ahead and jump back over to Photoshop, reopen it, update that map, and again, it's looking good. So. I want to show you how you can view that on your mesh in Max. Uh, normally, if you're working in a production pipeline, uh oh, Max got scared. Normally, when you're working in a production pipeline, you probably are going to be checking it in your game engine or something of the sorts. But uh, for this, we're just going to check it in max. So, oh man. I should have decimated down that 
crate. It's a little too dense. Every time I select it, Max is like, ooh! Ooh. Okay. So I'm just going to duplicate my low poly. I'm going to collapse that modifier off the stack. And this will be like my, my check mesh, if you will, off to the side. And it looks like I already have a material set up. But I'm going to grab a new standard material. I'll scroll down to maps. And I'm going to check bump. And I'm going to turn it up to 100%. Don't forget that. Turn it up to 100%. Add a normal bump node. And in that normal slot within that normal bump node, we're going to add a bitmap node. And right when you add it, it's going to ask you to browse to wherever your normal map is, which mine is under our folder structure from earlier. Projection mapping, demo, maps, create normal, open. And let's go ahead and give this base material some specular value. I'm going to set it to like 60, maybe 25. And you can see we actually got that normal map working there. So let's add our material. Oh, but it's not displaying in the viewport. And that's because we need to turn on the material itself. Uh, I'm sorry, the there's a display function uh, that you need to actually check on for that material itself. So we're going to show shaded material in viewport, not actually what you're going to do is you're going to hold down to get to the dropout for that menu and select the other one, show realistic material in viewport and you want to make sure you turn it on. Ooh. And now we can see our normal map on our low poly. And that's what this is all about. Just dropping our poly count so that we can kill the bad guys at 60 frames a second. And in Max, you can always turn on high quality and sort of check this with uh, lights and such. Ooh, fancy but we're not done I'm gonna go ahead and do that last render out with the high quality settings and that's really just to turn off a few things and turn on a couple of things or really just turn off Ramus check that was some of the red pixels that you were seeing and I had gaps in between these planks here and so the little red pixels you were seeing in the preview window were missed information little gaps I had but, but I'm gonna turn that off for my final render it's usually what I do I'll also roll down uh, sorry it's kinda of funny how you get to this menu you click the options to get to this projection options and then click the setup really just to get to the rendering menu render setup uh, to turn on some anti-alias features here. It's normally defaulted to area. I like setting it to Catmull ROM and uh, enabling some kind of global super sampler which is uh, again just more anti-aliasing really. Uh, Hammersley with a quality of one is kind of like top notch. I don't really mess with the others. Max 2.5 star if I'm in a pinch or a deadline, I need a quick map, whatever. Max 2.5 star will work fine. But Hammersley's kind of like the top notch with a Catmull ROM filter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and render that out. And that's my final quality settings. And I'll let you guys see what that looks like after this is done baking out. So that 1024 high quality map finished. And I'm going to flip over to Photoshop. I'm actually going to keep, this is the original uh, non-Hammersley and non-anti-aliased normal map. I'm going to actually copy it before I update so you can see the difference. Update. And I'm going to repaste the low quality one on. And if we zoom in on like some of these nail heads and like the corner pieces, you can just see the, uh, as I turn these on and off, the softness difference.
it just makes it look a lot less pixelated and kind of jaggy looking or stair you know stair steppy like it just softens a lot of that and back to our lit low poly see we got some uh, some good normals happen and that's the low poly right here that we're looking at and it's casting some pretty great or pretty convincing normals for you so that's all there is to it I'll probably do more complex videos in the future about how to render multiple maps and such but that's the basics for projection mapping a normal map high poly to low poly thanks for watching guys and I hope it was helpful JJ out